G'day guys, Steve Morgan here for Fishing Monthly Magazines and the Fishing Monthly Workshop. Well, it's just an undercover car park, but uh, we do have a workshop day today um, and it's got to do with uh, the Fishing Monthly Bass Boat, this old 10 year old 285 Stratus and Diamond Deck, which is a product we've been working with and it's a sponsor of Australian Bass Tournaments. Um, we tried Diamond Deck out at the start, which is a non-slip stick on deck material on the Fishing Monthly trailer here. And we've got a video on our channel about how we did that. We applied the non-stick on top of the guards and in all the exposed areas, Gave it a good test, and this is um, well over a year old now, this diamond deck, passed with flying colours. The next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to get rid of the carpet in the bass boat. Now, we use our bass boats in salt water a lot, uh, and salt water getting stuck in the carpet um, with the stainless steel and aluminium hinges, um, it's, it's really not a good combination. We get a lot of electrolysis, a lot of corrosion, but I've also found that when it rains, those decks get very heavy with the carpet on there. I reckon it holds 20 or 30 kilograms of of water um, every time it rains. It also takes a long time for it to dry after we've washed it. Um, we use these boats in salt water, as I said. We uh, we hose them out or gurney them with fresh water. It takes two or three days sometimes, especially in the cooler months, for that carpet to dry. So we don't like that. What we've done is we've uh, we've tried a few different ways of diamond decking the boat. Um, and it's all got to do with how we wrap it around the hatches. We tried this way, which was just a simple, like a Lego style way, with a, a top bit, we've cut some side bits. We've tried the next way, which is rolling it around and sealing it, and we've tried rolling it all the way around as well. So we've tried two or three different ways. We've had the back deck and the cockpit of the Fishing Monthly Stratus done for six months now, and we like it, so it's time to do the front deck. A lot of people at the ABT events have asked me, well, how do you do the diamond decking? Let me show you how it's done. Let's start. Uh, let's start at the front deck here, where I've done some uh, done some work already this morning. Um, what we what you have to do first is you have to pull off the old carpet. And you have to prepare the decks. Um, I've pulled the hatches off. Um, it's very handy to uh, to keep all of the uh, all of the equipment, uh, all of the screws. You can reuse all of the stainless steel screws and nuts, etc. Pull off all of those uh, all of the old hatches, um, and you're going to need also to pull the carpet off the uh, off the old deck. Um, there's a lot of products you can use to uh, to get rid of the glue and then to prepare the surface for the diamond deck but I've actually found the best is uh, is unleaded petrol. Um, a bit of unleaded petrol will dissolve all that old glue. You'll be amazed at the sand and the glue that you uh, that you have underneath these decks. Once you've washed it all down in petrol, I wash it down in a bit of acetone to take the petrol residue away and then it's ready to uh, ready to put the diamond deck on. But let's not stick too far ahead of ourselves now. Let's have a look at uh, this whole process of preparing the boat for diamond deck. So one of the things that I uh, that I find really helpful is when I'm pulling all of the hardware off the deck of the boat. Like I've got a ram mount, I've got a um, marine dynamics like sounder lifter, I've got my power pole accessories, um, I've got my rod my rod buckles. Um, one of the good things I find is you put all of the hardware and the gear in these little individual bags, so when you come to put it back together, you know where everything is. So luckily, uh, after 10 years, you've got areas where the carpet's already starting to come off. So right up at the front here where it's just been glued down, that contact adhesive, it starts to let go. And then you have a look here. When you pull the carpet up, it comes up pretty easily. You've got a mix here of sand, salt, and uh, glue residue. Um, and that's a real messy job. Um, we scrape the original um, the stuff off firstly with uh, with a chisel. I find it's a lot easier than a, a paint scraper. But then I'll use the um, I'll use petrol to dissolve the rest of this and uh, get it all back to a uh, highly polished state. Look at the dirt in the carpet here. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's, well, it's just sand, you know? Yeah. It just comes out of the carpet when you pull it up. So that's, uh, we vacuum this boat all the time, but that's the sand and the grit that gets caught in carpet. Mm -hmm. No way around it. Uh, you want it to be pretty clean, the deck, before you get the diamond deck down. It's got its own adhesive on the diamond deck, and you want it to be able to grip. So um, when I, you can use the paint scraper to get all the, the real rough stuff off, but when you get down to a fine level, you're going to need the chisel to get in. And I don't mind that it uh, scratches the gel coat a little, because I think it just gives the, uh, the diamond deck something to grab onto. So this will take off the main stuff. You're going to need petrol to take off the rest of the residue.
So getting those decks prepared and free of glue and residue is only one half of the equation. The other half are getting your deck hatches free of the same. So here's a couple that I've pulled off already. They're gonna have the glue, the sand, the junk all in them. Let's show you how, uh, how we do that as well. Here's the main tackle hatch. Um, like a lot of bass boats, the hatches are aluminium and not fiberglass. Aluminium's light, it's strong. Um, it does corrode a little bit. These are pretty good after 10 years. There's some little patches of corrosion, but nothing too bad at all. So all I do is I use the, uh, use the chisel again to lever up the edges and that glue, it's denatured pretty well over the years. Um, pull up all four of these edges and you can see the sand coming out, coming out of there. And of course I'm going to rescue these little, uh, these little nuts for when I put the diamond deck on later on. So I'll pull those little nuts out, but I'll, I'll do that later. Let's get these fellas off. My, um, my hatch, uh, Hinge, the hinges, the, uh, the gas struts. I'm going to reuse those as well. That, they'll have diamond deck over the top. And there's the third one. Let's get the fourth one out. Also, I've taken out all of the uh, the Perco uh, the Perco hatch locks. They've all come out. And look at that. Look at that sand behind there. And look how easy this thing comes off. Look at the sand in it. And that's it, they're ready to start clean up with the chisels and the petrol. And I'm gonna recover those nuts out of this. But look at that, look at the dirt on that. Doesn't matter how good you vacuum your boat, that dirt in the carpet is ridiculous. So we're getting to the final stages of the preparation now and it's amazing what a difference a little bit of elbow grease, some petrol and uh, a couple of very sharp chisels make. Um, we're just finishing off the last of these, uh, no the second last of these top decks now. Um, they're aluminium, you see the parts here where they've welded the, um, welded the supports into. Um, we've got rid of most of the glue with the petrol and then um, with the chisel we've just uh, scraped off the glue as it's been dissolved. So uh, we still need to give these guys a final clean up in some uh, wax and grease remover just to get it ready for the diamond deck application but uh, the preparation is always the hardest bit and it's always satisfying when it's nearly finished. Now that we've finished all the hard work of preparing the decks and the hatches, we're onto the fun part, and that's applying the diamond deck to the deck of the boat and to these aluminium hatches. Now, I played a lot of Tetris when I was a kid, and that's really helpful now because I need to work out a way to get uh, all of my hatches and the boat deck done on three of these one by 1.5 meter strips of diamond deck that I've gone and got from Andre at Diamond Deck. So uh, this is the five mil thick diamond deck, which is thick enough to be cushioning under your feet, but it's also thin enough to form around uh, around the corners and around the bends that this boat has. So what I've done is I've, uh, I've flipped this diamond deck over here and I've laid the hatches out and I've laid them out so that the flat edge of the boat runs uh, perpendicular to the main grain of the diamond deck. Of course, the diamond deck is a whole lot of small squares with other squares rotated inside them, hence the name diamond deck. So I think it's always good to lay your diamond deck out so it's, uh, it's uh, sort of parallel from top to bottom. So what we've done, we've flipped the diamond deck over. Of course, the grain runs long ways and across ways and I've had to line the bottom edge of the these hatches up uh, with the diamond deck to make sure that that grain is going to be the right way. Um, I work with di diamond deck, I found the best way for me to work with it is to work the same way that I've worked with marine carpet and that is to, to put the hatch on the top, cut around it with an inch or two spare around the edge, pull the backing sheet off, stick it down and then notch the corners out just like you do in marine carpet. Notch the corners out and then roll the diamond deck around. Now I've tried all the different ways of, uh, of affixing this diamond deck. I've tried just going flat across the top and then cutting strips on the edge, sort of Lego style I call that. Works well, doesn't look that good. I've tried the second way where I wrapped it all the way around and around the inside just like you wrap marine carpet. And that's also not good because it places too much stress on the diamond deck and it always wants to come and, uh, and lift back up again. And the third way and the way I found best for these aluminium uh, hatch lids is to cut it so that the diamond deck goes two thirds of the way around this edge 
you, you nick it off nice and neat and then you clamp it down with clamps and put some uh, some silicon all the way from the front to the back all the way around the edge of that uh, of the section and when you clamp that down leave it for an hour the glue on the back of this stuff is crazy good and it holds on I've done that back deck six months ago and not one bit of it has lifted up so uh, let's uh, I'm gonna get this job done and I can show you exactly how we uh, how we get it looking let's have a look at the front deck we've done so far just there looking good we've actually used one sheet there laid it down laid the lines the right way cut it rolled it uh, it's looking great so let's get on with these hatches that's going to get notched out in this corner anyway so I leave it about two centimetres because I don't want any more than's going to go up over that edge so mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it a couple of centimetres I'm going to cut this now I'm going to cut it Ready to put it on. So normally to apply diamond deck, if I was applying it say to this trailer, I'd be pulling the backing sheet off little by little and putting this uh, putting the diamond deck down on the surface. But I found this way is actually probably a little bit easier when you're doing big decks like this. I'm just going to pull the entire entire back section off, and I'm going to drop this in place as it's very important to get this uh, this centered on the diamond deck. So let's get the, uh, let's get it up here because this glue is like glue. Drop him on top there. We have all of our angles look right on that. And we are gonna start pushing that down. Once we've pushed it all down, I'm gonna start notching these corners out. That's when those bulldog clips are going to come into play. So let's grab the knife, just like marine carpet now. We're going to notch around these corners. Good thing about these blow mold tables is that you don't have to worry about cutting into them. They're good to cut into with a Stanley knife. <laughs> And it's just a matter of bending the diamond deck up and around and finishing with an ample supply of bulldog clips. And if you don't do this, especially on a hot day, it can let go in the initial, in the initial phases. So let's, uh, let's get it clipped up and holding on tight. So there we go, we've notched all of the corners out, we've folded the diamond deck up and we've cut it where it was too much level with the end of the hatches. But I like it actually down a little bit like this. That allows us to put a bead of Sikaflex around the edge to hold it forever. We're also going to put a bead later on right in this corner here to make sure that those corners all, uh, all match up. But let's have, a look at the, uh, let's have a look at the finished product. That side there, it is looking absolutely superb. So the very last thing we need to do to these decks before we put them back in the boat is silicon the edges. Now if we've got an edge where the edge is, is down a little bit, I like to run a bead of silicon along that edge and I also like to put a bead in these corners here to stop them lifting up. So Sikaflex is obviously the best. Um, you can make a boat out of Sikaflex, it would never ever sink I'm sure. There we go, so I'm going to do that for all of these hatches and once they're dry, we're going to get them back in the boat. We finished our main deck parts now, we finished all of the hatches. It's simple now, we just put it all back together again.
finally, we've got the job done and we've got it before the, uh, the sun's gone down. So we've done the whole recover of the front deck of the Fishing Monthly Stratus 285 Bass Boat uh, in under a, a daylight day in winter. So we're happy with that. Um, we've t taken off all of the old carpet. We've cleaned and prepped all the decks. We've taken the old carpet off the aluminium deck hatches, off three of those. We've cleaned and prepped those. And then we've applied three big sheets of this camo colored diamond deck um, in the afternoon. Now the big sheets are one by 1.5 Five meters and the diamond deck is 0.5 of a centimetre or five millimetres thick. Um, and we, we rolled it around the edges to the right level, we've siliconed it all off and then we've reattached everything uh, where it should be. Um, the things I love about the diamond deck, firstly, it it's dries really quickly. Um, if you wash this boat out, gurney it out, in an hour it's dry. With carpet it used to take days, especially down in the cockpit here to dry. Secondly, um, it makes your boat very light when it's raining. I don't know if you know, but uh, carpet picks up so much water when you're going. I, I reckon it adds 20 or 30 kilos to your boat at least when it's raining. So I'm always going to be running light. Um, but thirdly, and something I've worked out when I'm fishing, is I can hear a lot through the hull of the boat. Now that carpet dead in a lot of the noise, both from in the boat to down below, but also from below the boat to up. So now, I've worked, I've, we're fishing with the um, diamond deck on the back deck, I can hear my hydrowave through the back deck and I assume now that I've got it on the front deck, I can hear it through there as well. So if you're stealthy and you don't make a lot of boat noise, it's great to have that feedback from the environment about, uh, about exactly what's going on down there. Uh, but I've got an ABT to fish this weekend so this is uh, late in the afternoon Steve Morgan checking out from Fishing Monthly Head Office giving the thumbs up to Diamond Deck.